In the first part of this video lecture, we have defined what are extended random variables. We talked about their distribution and their cumulative distribution function. And now in the second part, we're going to make considerations that are specific to random variables, which here I emphasize are finite random variables, which means they never take the value plus or minus infinity. So they are not extended Borel functions. Not only they are extended Borel functions, but in particular, they are Borel functions. Remember, an extended random variable is nothing but an extended Borel function X defined on a probability space. And the distribution of a random variable is defined to be just the push forward of the probability measure to the real line. It should be emphasized here that every computation that involves the random variable x alone will only depend on p of x. So there's some layer of abstraction here where we start with some complicated space omega and some possibly complicated probability measure p and then we map it to the real line and get the image of this measure p by the function x and it turns out anything that depends only on the random variable x any computation it can be done on this space alone it does not matter where it came from this is the space that determines the behavior of the random variable x as long as there are no other events or random variables being considered. And we defined what is the cumulative distribution function of a random variable x. This cumulative distribution function is just the probability that the random variables, the random variable takes value less than a certain lowercase x, including minus infinity. And it turns out not only the distribution of the random variable determines the cumulative distribution function, it, in fact, the cumulative distribution function determines the distribution of the random variable, and that's because we can consider as a pi system uh, events like this. This is a pi system, and that is enough to say this determines the. Uh, this is a pi system that, that generates the entire sigma algebra, and this is enough to say it uh, determines the probability measure. You know, I specialized the previous discussion to the case where these random variables never take infinite values. And the definition, a random variable is an extended random variable that never takes values plus or minus infinity. It's as simple as that. And in this case, in the case when x never takes values plus or minus infinity, then this, its cumulative distribution function fx, it has a very nice property, which is as if you evaluate it at some point t, as you make take t to minus infinity, this will tend to zero, and as you take t to plus infinity, this will tend to one. And in that case, guess what? Since we are on the real line, this probability measure, it actually is the Lebesgue's Tucci's measures that are in, that is induced by its cumulative distribution function. So connecting to Lebesgue's Tucci's, which is something from week two of this module. And here to refresh our memories, what is the Lebesgue's Tucci's measure? It is exactly what we wanted it to be. It assigns as measure the measure of intervals which are open on the left and closed on the right, finite intervals, so there's no uh, bar here on the top of the real line. Uh, and the measure of an interval like this is simply capital F evaluated at B minus capital F evaluated at A. Here's the simplest possible random variable, except for the trivial case of a constant random variable, constant equal to zero. So this is a random variable that takes uh, possibly more than one value. Uh, more than one value, it's the simplest possible because then it takes two random variables. Yes, the indicator of a certain event, it takes value zero if the event does not occur, it takes value one if the events occur. So a, the indicator of a certain event is a random variable that takes values zero or one, so it's a Bernoulli random variable, and the probability that it takes value one is exactly the probability that the event A occurs. 
and this will be some value p. I'm defining p as the probability that this event occurs. It can be any number from 0 to 1, including 0, including 1. We call a random variable with this distribution a Bernoulli random variable with parameter p. And just for avoidance of doubt, uh, we use this standard notation when we write p of something, we actually are talking about the probability that this condition occurs. And if we want to be absolutely precise, it's the probability of this little set, the set of little omega for which x of that omega equals to 1. But we don't bother writing all this lot each time we want to consider a certain event. We write this and it is understood what it means. A simple random variable is a random variable that takes only finitely many values. And in, whenever a random variable is a simple random variable, we can list what are its uh, values that it can take, the events on which it takes those values. Since it will take either one or the other, these events, they are disjoint and their union equals omega. So they form a partition of omega. A partition is a collection of sets which are disjoint, mutually disjoint, and whose union is uh, the whole sample space omega. And when we, def we can define x by this formula. So this indicator is always zero except for the index i that coincides with the one ai that contains little omega. And for, for that index i, we assign the value bi to the random variable. So this is consistent with the fact that x takes value bi on the event that a occurs. And in this case, the probability that x takes that value is, by this previous observation, just the probability that a k occurs, which we define as being pk. It will be a number between 0 and 1 for each k. So in this case, again, x is called a simple random variable that takes value bk with probability pk. To conclude this video lecture, let us answer a question that we asked in the very first video lecture of this module. Existence of continuous random variables, one which is uh, slightly more uh, involved than just taking the uniform on 0, 1. So let's construct here an exponential random variable. We can take a sample space R as sigma algebra, so it's an explicit construction, as sigma algebra the Borel sets, and as probability measure, the Lebesgue measure restricted to this interval 0, 1. Okay. So well, already, if we just look at omega itself as, the, as a random variable, so if you take this uh, trivial random variable that just makes om maps omega to omega, already you got a random variable whose distribution is uniform on 0, 1. However, we're going to do something a little more interesting with it, which is we, take, we define x of omega to be minus the logarithm. Logarithm always means the natural logarithm. That's the only logarithm we care about in this module. Minus the logarithm of the absolute value of omega. And, well, if omega is zero, this would be a minus infinity, but that happens with probability zero, so let's leave that aside for now. This function x is measurable. Yeah. So this function x is measurable, and because it's measurable, it is an extended random variable. And if we write what is its cumulative distribution function, well, the probability that it's less than lowercase x for some x is exactly the measure of the set of all little omegas for whose logarithm or negative logarithm is at most x. We have to take the intersection with the interval 0, 1. And why is that? That will be because our probability measure was defined as the restriction of the Lebesgue measure to 0, 1 in the first place. And finally, the measure, the Lebesgue measure of this set, it will be equal to 1 minus e to the minus x if x is non-negative and 0 if x is non-positive. Uh, and whenever a random variable is such that its cumulative distribution function is given by this formula, 
we say that x follows the exponential distribution with unit parameter. Unit parameter, as you know, of course, is this one here that we have instead of x and 1 divided by 1 that we have. Um, well, actually, we don't have that. So this is uh, the definition of uh, an exponential random variable, which we have proved to exist explicitly by constructing the, probab the probability space except, of course, that we are assuming existence and uniqueness of the Lebesgue measure, which we proved using Carl Theodori extension theorem and the Pi lambda theorem, which are two theorems that we assumed without proof.